Well, good morning, everyone. How's it going? Well, well, what an incredible honor it is to be here with the Mount St. Vincent family to join all of you on our continuing journey. Life's journey is defined by the stories that we have that are unique to each of us. And we converge here in this amazing university celebrating success on our individual and collective journeys. And during these moments, it's such a powerful thing to be able to not just do the perfunctory celebration, but to do the deep and earnest celebration that is warranted such an incredible accomplishment in this journey today. Graduates, I want to congratulate you. It is such a privilege to join you, your faculty members, staff, family, parents, friends, and role models who have helped you to get to this place. But in reality, it is you who fiercely have strived through your obstacles with guts and determination to take those risks, that perilous and uncertain journey to enter this university and to define your academic career and to be in this moment where you have accomplished a tremendous success. The skills and the attributes and the resilience and self-regulation that you have defined will be there for you for the rest of your lives. They will carry you in good stead and the success will be necessary to be reminded during those dark times when we find ourselves struggling as we do in life's peaks and valleys. I feel so privileged also that when we're here in these moments to be able to also celebrate with gratitude that there is no one on this planet that ever gets anywhere on their own. And we have a chance to be able to reflect on the deep connections that have driven us, supported us, inspired us, and challenged us as we've gone forward when we needed them most. Especially our families, mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, people close to us, whether they're by blood or by extension, who steadfastly stayed with us and believed in us and encouraged us along the way. Our teachers, well, for me, teachers have been powerful. How would I have imagined that at this point, a young kid from Williams Lake at the age of 15, a small little community with hopes and dreams of maybe being able to represent his country at the Olympic Games and then finding one moment that whole view had changed. In an accident, I was in the back of a pickup truck coming back from a fishing trip. It crashed and my back was broken, my spinal cord was damaged, and a few hours later, the doctor came into the hospital room and he told me and my family that I would never walk again. All of my hopes and dreams seemed to be shattered with that news. I had absolutely no idea what life might be like because I knew no one with a disability, no one in a wheelchair, and my whole frame of reference was really defined by what I thought was being completely independent. And of course, everything revolved around the use of my legs. What I was about to learn is that I had inherited at the age of 15 in 1973, a tremendous stereotype that was going to be my greatest handicap, my view of my situation. And if I didn't redefine that, I would constantly be limited from having any meaningful life, and it would not have been about the use of my legs. But fortunately, I had powerful influences on my life's journey. My teacher, Bob Redford, he was my physical education coach, and he reminded me that nowhere in the definition of an athlete does it say you have to use your legs in order to be one. It's defined by your passion, your commitment to excellence, and he introduced me to the world of wheelchair sport or Paralympic sport. And all of my hopes and dreams were waiting for me. I needed to just adjust and to redefine possibilities and to get back in motion again. I also was introduced to a peer counselor named Stan Strong. And when I complained about being in the hospital for over four years, um, you know, he, when I complained, sorry, about being in the hospital for over four months, he came in and said he was there for four years and that he wasn't supposed to survive. And he put it in perspective, and when I saw Stan, there was this infectious, 
powerful smile that was pure, driven love, hope, meaning, and connection. And he was inspired to pay it forward by reaching back to the next generation like me to say, you have a choice. It's not what happened to you, it's what you do with it that counts. Attitude is everything. Stan Strong was my great mentor. As a matter of fact, he encouraged me by being a manager of our wheelchair basketball team to recruit others just like me who were struggling. And there was a young man who had just lost his leg to cancer and he was a basketball player and living in uh, and, and going to Simon Fraser University. I got him involved in our team and his name was Terry Fox. And Terry Fox was completely transformed by the experience in that basketball team connected to Stan Strong, who gave selflessly of himself to help Terry, myself, and so many other athletes just be athletes. And when you experience something like that, you can't help but be propelled and motivated to be able to pay it forward, whether it be through your Paralympic career, the Man in Motion World Tour. It was absolutely a mandate in my culture to be able to make a difference to know that the attitudes that you inherit, those of society and the physical barriers that are out there, they need to change. And we can complain or we can actually be motivated to get involved and to do something, to break down barriers. When the Man in Motion Tour came through Halifax and all this great province of Nova Scotia, I was welcomed back to Canada with open arms from coast to coast. Many people in this room were part of that journey, and I'll be forever indebted. It is the people who I've invited here, guests of mine, that I'd like to acknowledge personally. Linda Loisel, Chuck Bridges, Jerry Post, and Ross Sampson. And I'd like to acknowledge them, and I see Ross, and I see Jerry in the corners there, but they have been a powerful part of my journey, and it is not one man in motion, it is many in motion, and true social change comes from all of us doing our part. Thank you to each and every one of you who have made an incredible contribution. Thank you. President Bluchert, Chancellor Sister Joan, faculty, staff, and graduates, family and friends, Receiving this honor is truly an inspiration. It is a recognition of progress to date, of the incredible team of people who help me be recognized and to take credit for them on our movement. And yet we have come so far, worthy of celebration, but we have so far to go. We must be vigilant, and I believe that my best work is in front thanks to you. I'd like to thank the Mount for your commitment on the continuing journey to remove barriers. I am so thrilled to be celebrating this moment with you in an inclusive environment on this stage, but more importantly, with one of your very own, Casey, Casey Perrin, you are an unbelievable example of progress, and you are right here graduating, and I am thrilled and honored that you are an ambassador of the present and future. Casey, congratulations. I'm honored. Amazing. We will get there. And in conclusion, I feel it's a privilege to be able to speak to students from around the world, and I'm blown away by their passion, their insight, and their ability to represent their values and their talent and their time and ultimately the activities that they believe in, but also the curiosity and the insight, the questions, continue to ask questions. Don't accept the status quo, never be satisfied because we are all on a journey in building a healthy and inclusive world. And there's one question that constantly comes back when I get a chance to present, and it blows me away about the insight. It is, Mr. Hansen, if you had a choice to go back when you were youth hitchhiking, getting in the back of that pickup truck that sealed your fate, 
Would you choose to not get in the back of the pickup truck? Would you trade your life for the use of your legs? It's a powerful question. My answer to them is that when I was first injured, I absolutely would have never gotten in the back of that pickup truck. I thought my whole life had been ripped from me. I would have traded my soul for the use of my legs. I thought God had abandoned me. I was angry, bitter, and depressed. But you're asking me now, many years later, in working through the hard journey of life, and my answer to you is that I would constantly, every single time, get back into that pickup truck. I would never trade my life for the use of my legs. I feel like I'm one of the luckiest people on the planet because I've been asked the tough questions about what is important. And graduates on your journey, you've learned so much, the academic information, but it is the deep love that you have experienced with your family, friends, and community. It is the meaning to be able to feel that you have a goal and a dream and you wake up in the morning setting those goals, pursuing them with purpose and passion, learning and growing as human beings that you define your values that help translate into your actions and give you the integrity that you need to be a whole human being. I've learned that I do not need to be cured in order to be whole as a human being. I say thank you for the privilege of this journey. Thank you for being with me. Let's continue to move forward together. Let's build a healthy and inclusive world, one good turn at a time, and create transformational change throughout this world. And schools, universities, and colleges, places of learning, they need to be that beacon of hope. And you are providing this every single day, and I congratulate all of you. Continue to celebrate this success. Never, ever give up on your dreams. Anything is possible. Thank you so much. Such a privilege. Thank you. Thank you.